Hello and welcome to another Netflix commentary track. This is actually on Hulu as of this recording. This is Seven from 1997, directed by David Lynch, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. And since I'm assuming you've seen this already, let's go ahead and throw in there Gwyneth Paltrow and Kevin Spacey. So, uh, this is actually exiting Hulu, and I don't know where it's going to be next, but this is a movie that I see around. I'll be around, says this movie. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to cue this up with just about anything. But first, let me go ahead and mention my friends over at calderalab.com. They make some of the finest skincare for men that you can get. Um, all right, let's see, how do I tie this into seven? It's it's uh, very clean, organic. It's not going to be committing one of the seven deadly sins. Use my promo code FRY15 at checkout. Save 15% off your purchase. Okay, so uh, this is a movie that I had one of the first... I think it's actually tied with my first DVD purchased alongside Alien. And it had a very special edition DVD. I saw this on VHS back in the day. It was a bit of a watershed moment for me. And I believe that if you sit through, you suffer through for your sins, this uh, commentary track, you will... I, I can convince you that Seven is better than The Silence of the Lambs. And, in fact, the best of the cop chase serial killer thrillers uh, probably, possibly ever. So go ahead, queue up to zero, 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 and hit play now. And you're seeing the, the old reliable, trusty new line cinema floating by. Uh, that, I, I know it's the house that Freddie built, but for me, that intro right there is uh, Austin Powers. I am enjoying some popcorn while we do this. Cold opening here. Morgan Freeman as Detective Somerset may as well be the same age still, right? I think that in the time that this movie is made, Brad Pitt is probably aged more than Morgan Freeman. So, detective in the city. The city is never named, but it should... Uh, some people are saying it's New York City. I think it's understood that it's California-based and therefore Los Angeles. However, it's raining most of the time. I'm not sure if there's a reason why we don't have a... Um, more specific name for the city, or see more of it, I guess, but it's effective enough. Crime of Passion, yeah, you can see all the passion splattered on the walls. I don't, you know, I actually watched this a couple days ago, so I could take some notes. This first crime where uh, Somerset meets uh, Brad Pitt's Detective Mills, not related to the, the seven murders which will occur. Right, well, maybe they're not all necessarily murders, but damn close enough. Over the course of seven days. So it's called seven, but in a way that could just be the seven days up to Somerset's retirement. Directed by David Lynch. I think this was his follow-up to Alien 3. I don't think he had something between Alien 3 and this. But you're going to get some strong Fight Club vibes between being a David Lynch film and Brad Pitt. This movie, a mere four years newer than The Sounds of the Lambs. 91 to 95. It looks 20 years newer. Easily. Um, actually, this movie looks better than most new films, for that matter.
And we're still doing that cold opening. It's not exciting, is it? But this made pretty significant dough at the theaters. I think uh, about it was at least 200 million gross. I, I know that much. This guy Somerset, he's got such a miserable life, doesn't he? It's uh, he's alone. Has to go uh, check in on all these grisly murders all the time. Every just the city's just overflowing with crime. Needs RoboCop, doesn't it? David Lynch's or <laughs> David Finch, I mean RoboCop. Amazing title sequence. Uh, there's a lot of movies of title sequences I enjoy. Uh, we've mentioned Alien, Terminator, Terminator 2. Uh, this title sequence, though, is so much more uh, modernized. There's some very nifty effects here, and it has, I think, it kind of lends towards. Uh, David Fincher having a... Did, did I call him David Fincher earlier? Or did I say David... I said David Lynch at one point, but... He made music videos. And so you're getting music video style montage here. Mark Boone Jr., John C. McGinley. We're going to see uh, Richard Roundtree. A lot of people we may recognize here throughout the movie. Also of note, Trent Reznor's band, Nine Inch Nails, does this uh, closer song that accompanies this title sequence. Trent Reznor, now a frequent collaborator with David Fincher, I was actually watching Gone Girl uh, last night for the first time, and I thought it was pretty good. And uh, it had, you know, David Fincher direction... Trent Reznor score. He, though Trent Reznor doesn't do the score here, it's more of a songs. In a film that is going to be taking itself seriously and having a, such a drab, downer of a vibe tone about it, to kind of do the uh, sort of industrial of the time rock, I, it's a bit... It's asking a lot out of the critics to, to say, take this movie seriously if we're going to be uh, going sort of a Gen X type uh, vibe. I think this movie was well received, but I mean, seriously, consider this and, and how it kind of forms up against the Sound of the Lambs. Make, keep making those comparisons. Because this comes after, I think Sound of the Lambs gets a lot of credit for having... Oh, it has such a, uh, the brilliant antagonist of, of Hannibal Lecter, though. Is he really the antagonist? He's, uh, becomes of such, but, it's really, it's Buffalo Bill's movie, isn't it? I would think. I mean, he is the guy they're trying to catch. Gwyneth Paltrow in a movie before you hated her. I think the concept here is that these are actually a couple dating at the time of this. And here we go with the rain. I believe that they had uh, sprinklers set around for these scenes. They have to be pretty big, but there are parts where you can look in the back and it doesn't appear people are getting rained on. I think this is going to be our first of the... Uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Or am I wrong? I don't think the... I don't think that... F first murder sequence... He was going at the crime of passion was... Maybe I need to keep count. But, uh... Not a lot in the way of key light... Used in this, and... From a practical standpoint, 
can't you kind of see that the um, there'd be more lights turned on, really, so there's no power in the house? I mean, okay, visually, it looks more intriguing to be pointing about the flashlights. Those mag lights back then, a few things say mid-90s, like a, a big, beefy D-battery mag light. I think my dad still keeps one under his bed to club some intruder. I mean, come on, we got TV on. You're telling me that this house doesn't have a light switch for, you know, more serious lighting than those lamps? Oh, yeah, Cole Guinness, we got a world record. Huge guy. But by today's standards, he's normal, right? We don't want to body shame. Heart the size of canned ham. How big is this can? So, Detective Mills here is sort of shadowing Somerset, who is retiring. And he is... Uh, He he had he says he speaks of some experience. He was on homicide a number of years, all this whatever. But it's Somerset's doing really all the work in the movie. There's not a lot being pieced together by Mills. Could a movie like this make anywhere close to as much money as it did in 95 when you were more inclined to go to the movie theater and it didn't have to be a, oh, well, I've already seen 22 movies in the franchise, so do not be lost. I need to continue with this. Standalone star vehicle just don't seem to do anything anymore, do they? In contrast to the Silence of the Lambs. Look at how much more contrast there is going to be throughout this movie as far as the lighting goes. This movie, it's not like I'm watching it in high dynamic range, but it may as well be the reason such a feature exists. I really like the... The camera work throughout this movie. You know, bit of a pet peeve here. The mysterious removal of the headrests in cars. No one ever takes those off. But in movies, TV shows, they sure don't seem to have them. But I like this perspective of riding along with them sort of in the back seat. I 
All right, I think we're going to see some male junk here. Though, is it is it possible that this was a uh, a dummy? I think that's the case. I, surely not an actual guy on the slab. See, Mills doesn't know anything specific. He's there so that Somerset has someone to explain what's going on. Mills is your substitute for the audience. Bride Pitt sure does not play this role today. If anything, he he's the veteran, right? Somebody pointed a gun into this guy's head for a while, left an impression. I think that is your take, like the big score for, as far as uh, Detective Insight, we're going to get out of Mills. Oh, uh, there's our guy Gunny. I mean, I just forgot his damn name too. Uh, Captain over here, police, or is he the chief? No, I think, I think Richard Roundtree is the chief. So we actually have Shaft elevated to Chief of Police. I mean, this is not a soft police precinct uh, operation over here. Department. Yeah, I want to be reassigned. This is, is going to go too long. you got to let me do something else. Let me do traffic duty. He's not ready for this. He's from the Midwest. He ain't ready for this grizzly shit. Arlie Ermy, that's his name. Didn't have to look it up. I, I never like having to look stuff up when it's in my uh, my brain already. Over the course of the seven days, the newly acquainted Mills and Somerset do grow closer. And by the end of it, you can see they're there's a bond established. I'm going to put you on something else. Somerset, you're left cleaning up the fat man. Tuesday. It's kind of like the ring, right? Monday. Tuesday. Happy days. Murder has a new uptown address. We have another victim. And here's Richard Roundtree. Yeah, he's the chief. Actually, hold on. Is he chief or mayor or something? Don't you miss when police wore hats? Looks a, a little more official and friendly rather than all semi-swat. Like they're playing Army of Two. Alright, so who do we have dead here? Let's take a look. The perspective of, of uh, this movie. It's not told strictly from the eyes of Somerset or Mills, but shared between the two of them. At no point 
is it the perspective of the killer, John Doe? And this is unique um, in many ways uh, from anything, any kind of precedent in the uh, the serial killer thriller or any uh, Italian similar films like uh, Deep Red from the 70s. District Attorney, sorry. Um, may as well be Chief, but... The detectives are trying to solve what's going on with the audience. The audience isn't privy to any information. The trade-off here is that you don't get um, what a lot of these movies bank on is like the big performance from the the villain, right? You don't get to see the the Joker being the Joker because he, he's his work's already been done, and these are the guys cleaning up. That said, it creates a, a reveal for the end. And I think that the John Doe character works best in small spurts. If we had too much of him, it wouldn't be as effective. Check out that digital timepiece over there on Morgan Freeman. Not what you'd expect his character to have. I mean, look at him. He's got... Ancient ass uh, typewriter reads books all the time. Is he going to have a digital watch? I don't think so. I like how the world building in this also has the changing of the guard. Though it is strange that he has... Somerset has an office, yet he also seems to have a desk out there with all the other desks, so which is it? But they're scraping his name off of the, the window on that door. So you can kind of see this... Uh, the goings-on of a... Uh, Retirement, a uh, the going away tour. If you were in the NBA, right? Now you don't have a whole lot of guys uh, coming up to him, you know, being all chummy. Hey, you know, gonna miss you around, you know, any of that talk. Hmm, got some evidence here. This some plastic was fed to the guy. What? I have to go take a look at this. This I do find a bit strange. Uh, it seems in his planning of this, John Doe realized in moving this fridge that he scraped some of the floor. And for it to be plastic is... I thought the floor looked kind of wood to me, but then put the pieces in the guy's mouth or had him eat it along with the food he was eating so that they would have some kind of way to tie a clue to moving this refrigerator rather than just leaving something up front. I mean, he did just simply write greed on the ground in blood, right? But here you're going to have to move the fridge to get the sloth warning. See if I put these here. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, the first one I take out fits. You get a bit of a ring vibe here with the, the color palette. Maybe, uh, maybe the ring took some infor uh, some inspiration from Seven. All right, now I'm bringing some stuff together here. So 
like Milton, Paradise Lost. Mills is like, I better write this down. Let's go with Milton Bradley. I have a board game company that I don't think is uh, no longer operating. All right, hold on. Wait, so we didn't do Sloth. It was Gluttony. My bad. Gluttony and Greed. Sloth, Wrath, Pride, Lust, and Envy. I don't think those first two, uh, Crime of Passion, was associated. Oh yeah, the new guy is eager. I need to uh, pace myself on this popcorn. More rain. It's quite possible the only day without rain is uh, when they get away from the city in the, in the last day. Gonna go visit that library. Now, does he really need to snap on these guys for playing poker? Oh, all these books, and you guys want to waste your night playing poker? Who's to say they're not reading stuff during the day or other nights? I mean, give them a little bit of time to play poker, please. Now, I haven't frequented a library that looks quite as stoic as this one. Uh, when I was growing up in Oklahoma, there was a library that had the, the big glass dome, stained glass dome over the uh, receiving area of circulation, right? And, you know, it had this uh, uh, older America uh, near Art Deco-esque design about it. And now when they build a new library, they, they've got it worked out to such a streamlined utility, they then have to find some way to inject character. Okay, we'll put up a graphic. We'll put up a quote from uh, oh, the world's something, whatever, if you have your library card from uh, whoever it is that writes the uh, Arthur with the anteater, you know? We ever get a size on that uh, gluttony guy? At least 500, right? In truth, I'm not convinced that uh, the research here leads to anything as far as uh, understanding or catching John Doe. You know, it's weird. You got the seven deadly sins. You have the Ten Commandments. Who came up with which? And it, is it okay that there seems to be overlap or <laughs> something similar? But Somerset's kind of doing this off the books, giving, uh, he wants to pass along with some help to uh, Mills, who he, he he's assuming is just going to be taking up this uh, case. If they understood that there was a serial, serial killer at this point, you think they'd have a bigger... 
operation going, a whole ton of cops, you know, stringing the, the red line around, you know, like um, the meme from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You got you to gotta put those threads on the board, pin those down to your leads. Well, we're not dating the movie too much here. I think we still have photocopiers like this. Okay, sure, we'd have some changes in cell phones. And, you know, as cars go, we mostly just see the inside of them. Movie operates fairly timeless, doesn't it? All right, I did your homework for you, Mills. There you go. Look at that. No rain. Wednesday. Watch. We cut down to the street. Monsoon. But look, in the back, no rain. Clearly, the director had a, envisioned a world of rain here, but didn't want to shoot in Seattle. We actually have a cop drop by the cliff notes. It's it's almost like Mills is cheating. Like a wink to the camera type move. Alright, we get it. You're not the learned guy. Detective Mills office. Oh, okay. I did I didn't know you were coming in. Even though your name is now on the door, right? Oh man, we got the rickety desk from the 50s, don't we? Those old steel stamp desks. Chair is not the ergonomic gaming chair designed to look like a Recaro racing seat. Let's see, I just hide these uh, cliff notes here. Yeah. Tell them I read all the stuff. How would you like that, man? You get out of school because you don't want to have to read everything for homework. And your job is homework. It's your office. You answer the phone. Of course, you're not answering the phone so much for your wife in a modern film here. You know, you got the cord here and all. It's a, it'd be a cell phone or a text message for that matter. Your wife wants to talk to me. Hmm, this is weird. Uh, well, I appreciate the offer, but uh, in that case, I'd be delighted. Ooh, burn. She hung up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, your wife invited me to dinner. So uh, a late supper, he says. But And I agreed, so I guess I'll see you. I can't think of any significance behind the basketball hoop tie there on Brad Pitt. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow looks 
pretty similar to this still, doesn't she? How are the kids? He refers to the two dogs they have as the kids. Uh, possible foreshadowing. And her clothes and hairstyle are not particularly dated. Uh, Morgan Freeman dressed rather classic. There's a medal of some kind over this mantle. I, we didn't much bring up what that's about. Now this is, um, it, it's the city, right? No one has a house. Everybody is in an apartment. And because of this, it seems like that is, uh, some people are saying, oh, it's supposed to be New York, right? They also have a, a train that goes by, so I guess it's like an L train, so it could be like Chicago. Oh yeah, that'd be a hard pass on uh, picking up that real estate if... Soothing, relaxing, vibrating home. Ha ha ha, hilarious. Let's all have a good laugh. You gotta just make sure you show off the, the open house schedule, uh, when the train's not going by, right? Biggest defense lawyer in town. Mysteriously killed. Office closed Monday, bounty found Tuesday. When they said biggest defense lawyer in town, they, I mean, he looked pretty heavy to me. He's given kind of a game here. Um, pound of flesh. If you cut a pound of flesh off, I'll let you live. Other guy is just you had to eat till you die.
Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, you read him. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, remember uh, Purgatory, yeah. Um, Dante and his buddy. <laughs> yeah, it really sounds like you read him. To be able to pull this stuff off without any witnesses is most impressive, if not improbable. I, I don't see how people can have dogs in an apartment. Um, if you have to have a dog, have a damn lawn. With a fence. Or at least a chain to hook them up. Let's see, is the, is the uh, wife a target here? We got her in the safe house, nothing happening. I wonder if the barely functional shirt that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow has there will make a comeback. More rain. So this is the safe house, huh? And we're going to cover up the uh, the graphic stuff in the picture there with a post-it note. So the John Doe draws the circles on the eyes of the lawyer's wife, the attorney's wife, and under the assumption that she will be able to recognize what's wrong with the office so that they can investigate further. I didn't think to take the painting down, did you? At modern art, it's a little hard to tell if it's upside down or not. I guess that's the joke. Now, we've, we've been kind of teased here with Somerset's uh, switchblade. He's used it to get into a crime scene. He'll cut that tape. Now he's uh, cut the back of the canvas here, but there's no uh, big payoff. It's a bit of a red herring. So 
saying the knife doesn't get to any real bigger use out of it. Oh, we're going to get clues to find another body. Now, attorney working at in his office, that's going to be noticed. You don't need to come across that. This next one, a secluded shut-in type situation. I want you guys to find some of these a little quicker. Now, you got seven days to try to complete this. Not the victim's fingerprints. Well, whose are they? Track them down. Okay, this might be a... The fingerprint scene may be a little bit different these days. I'll give you that. Voices made me do it. The dog made me, Jody Foster made me do it. I always heard it was the, he wanted to impress Jody Foster, not that she made him do it. Maybe I, I should look into that uh, Reagan shooting thing a little more. Now, I don't live in one of these older cities like this, but you ever go to a police station and just see such, you know, lack of light, lack of fluorescent light, washing out everything? So you can have a nice uh, shadowy hallway to shoot your movie in. I wonder, can they run prints crazy fast now so you don't have to have these guys sleeping on the couch? Glimmer Twins. I guess I may have to look up what that means. Alright, so here's the guy, this Victor. Drugs, arm robbery, uh, whatever. Attempted rape of a minor. That's the one that really sticks with everybody. Everybody seems to have an opinion of, of him on. Um, I don't know, all the stuff this guy's been doing, it kind of makes you wonder how he's out. But hey, again, California. <clears throat> Speaking of California... John C. McGinley over there, Dr. Cox, right? He's sort of the SWAT team leader in this movie. His character's name is California. Oh yeah, we certainly don't have police cars looking like that now. Most of these would be SUVs. More rain. Never my 34 years, knock on wood, did I ever have to take a bullet? Oh, yeah, yeah the other year is uh, 
I had to pull my gun. A guy got shot. He died. I forgot his name. Oh, man, why can't I remember his name? Well, look at that. We have a headrest in this, in this chair. You're riding an ambulance with a cop that was bleeding out with you. You can't remember the guy's name. You guys ever cosplay Seven? I I did look up the uh, I think fictional county in which this. Uh, you'll see the John Doe's shirt at the end. He's got like the county jail. Um. Uh, shirt and you can order that I mean there's people selling it but I don't see anybody walking around being like hey I'm Detective Mills so many dilapidated buildings in this city that have no light But all for the better, for for the storytelling, right? I mean, goodness, this, look how dim those lights are. Is, is there maybe a code that requires better lighting in hallways? Here we go, SWAT before dicks. We get to do the battering ram. I don't think the battering ram has changed much. I, I do think our SWAT team guys would be wearing helmets, though. Quite the immense apartment, is it not? Wouldn't it seem like this is taking up like most of the floor? Hmm, why do we have all of these uh, air fresheners? Which I don't think anybody buys those pine tree looking air fresheners put in cars anymore. It would be kind of like if they they pulled over and they parked their car and they put the club on the wheel. Oh yeah, this guy's looking bad. Which I wonder here if you know, not just heavy appliance makeup, but possibly puppet work. Here's your sloth. That's three. We got some pictures here. Now you can't take those to the one hour photo. You gotta develop them yourself. How it started and how it's going, right? See, look, the cops who are supposed to be fairly impartial about this, it's like, you got what you deserved. You can't possibly think that this guy is the murderer. He can't do this to himself. We got our medics in the rain, and it looks like people are walking around in dry weather in the background. Oh, but no, dudes, you just fixed it with CGI. Oh, well, 
All right, so we have a photographer who tipped off a cop, got paid pretty well to get get to the crime scene early. That's the story anyhow. Make sure you know my name here. It's M Mills, M-I-L-L-S. It's like, what's he doing here? They pay cops for the information. They pay well. Did he pay you, Somerset? Is that what you're you're implying here? Now you never really know what comes of this guy. Um, bad shape. Say so if you shine a light in his eyes, you could the shock could kill him, right? Does he ever get rehabilitated? I think there's a strong assumption he's dead. His brain's been turned to mush. I guess uh, the methodical starvation may do this to one. Been experienced about as much pain as anybody has ever t taken. Still has hell to look forward to. All right, see you guys. You know, I gave my opinion. Passed my judgment, and there you go. I mean, if the guy has uh, served his time, if he's out, right, aren't, aren't the people in the corrections uh, sort of uh, department, right? They're supposed to... Maybe, uh, I don't know, may have a little bit of sympathy, possibly. Or one would expect that out of somebody. Alright, so you did some crime, you did your time. It's never, oh, if you don't do the crime, if you can't. It's, it, this, the phrase is, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. And then we'll judge you afterward. <laughs> like, they don't throw that one on there. So we have a little bit of a um, odd moment here. Tracy calls Detective Somerset, wants to get together, talk, um, wants his advice. You're the smartest guy I know in the city. The camera doesn't cut to the exterior. It's, you know, something set up, a close-up of cracking the eggs over the griddle, right? It's much more of a newer way to go about this. You don't see Somerset come in. She's already sitting down. None of that. And then they start talking. It's like we're we're joining the conversation in progress. Uh, this is kind of Hemingway-esque. And the movie concludes with a Hemingway quote. All right, cut to the chase. What did you uh, want to talk to me about over here? Well, it's so important that you know it's fifth grade that she teaches. Conditions are horrible here. How bad is the school? Well, tell me uh, what's really bothering you, Tracy. Dave and I are going to have a baby. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, congratulations. Oh, now we'll get some uh, not-so-sound parenting advice here. You spoil that child every chance you get. And you'll wonder how we end up with my super sweet 16. Me and my, my gal, we got pregnant a long, long time ago. Things didn't really work out.
How can you bring a child into this world? How? I mean, uh, surely there's got to be like some uplifting, uh, fun part of the city, right? Well, not everybody can have it as drab as the homicide detective. trying to think here. Was there ever a reunion between Brad Pitt and or Gwyneth Paltrow, Morgan Freeman? I think that a, a number of people misconstrued the Somerset character here for Alex Cross from uh, Kiss the Girls Along Came a Spider. I think some viewers actually seem to think that Along Came a, a or, or Kiss the Girls is some way a, a sequel to Seven. Uh, when it's greatly inferior and rather derivative. That's a pager, kids that pager indicating someone was trying to reach him so he should call back not a lot of people had those when I was a kid um, I was coming into high school at a time when kids started to get cell phones I had a cell phone maybe a third of the kids around high school Sophomore, junior year had cell phones. By senior year, I think everybody has a cell phone. Not many ever seem to have pagers. Best tenant we ever had. Guy just laid on a bed for a year. All the money was, was paid on time. dismissive to call him a lunatic. Come on, he is insane. He's a nutcase. <laughs> Brad Pitt definitely playing this like the uh, sort of obnoxious bored child here. Lots of uh, you know, unprofessional demeanor. Sit in the chair, slouch. Uh. Alright, so I'm counting three murders so far. Not including the two at the top at the front of the movie. Check out that CRT monitor. CRT does not mean what it... If someone says CRT today, it's not... They're not talking about cathode ray tubes anymore. Just because you got a library card doesn't make him Yoda. There's some good lines in this movie. Well, where are we going? A field trip. You got some money on you? Yeah, about 50 bucks. Would he not do the, uh, you got 50 bucks on you? That's good enough line yet? I think he does here. Yeah, because they're meeting the guy. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't see how sitting side by side makes it look like you're dating. 
Wouldn't that typically be a cross? There's uh, Mark Boone Jr. Had a certain knack for having real small parts in pretty good movies. Cryptic stuff. You hand me this. All right, see you in an hour. Didn't really say where, but they seem to know where. I'm pissed. He took 50 bucks. No, no, I'm going to make faces. No. Brad Pitt possibly overacting this. I, he got quite a bit of claim in 95 for 12 Monkeys. I, there was a lot of talk for his performance in 12 Monkeys. I think this is the better movie. All right, I'll tell you what now. Now that I got your money, guy works for the Bureau. The concept here is that he's going to provide a list of the names of people who've checked out flagged books. That uh, when, once you check out a flagged book from the library system, they track everything that you pick up from the library. Oh, it's not completely illegal. You know, at the time you're watching this, they're like, oh yeah, we gotta do this real secret over here. Don't let anybody know that I gave you this information. We shouldn't even be talking about this in person. Now it is common for you to sign away your information when you join a social network. Here's the problem. For the John Doe character, we know his interests now, right? Who's to say he didn't buy these books? Uh, and it's not like he had to buy them online from Amazon in 95. I mean, he could pick them up at a garage sale. You, n you never would have had a trail. I just don't see how the connection of him checking them out at the, at the library leads to them coming to his apartment. It seems like he should have had these books prior. The Marquis de Sade, St. Thomas Aqua something. Yeah, come on. Does the Mills character kind of uh, grate at you a bit here? Just the, I don't know, ineptitude, the, the unreadness about him? Ah, uh, here's the place. I think a nice red door. Oh, he said the R word. Hmm, who's that looking over here? I'll just uh, pull this out and boom. Does it strike you as a little surprising that John Doe would have a pistol on him given that he hasn't committed murders by gun? He, the, he has um, had Jigsaw-esque games about, you know, b before Jigsaw, of course. I would think in some way the Saw films took inspiration from this, obviously. There's something in movies, when it comes to a foot chase, they can always go the direction the assailant went. No one ever gets lost. Which way do you go? And then somebody quickly tells them if they have to point it out. And just right there.
Oh, see him running through. Those people are really not that too shaken by this. Like, you got these kids just playing some games. Oh, hey, you went, over, went through that way. Oh, we're still playing, uh, what, Nintendo or something. Or are they watching TV? They're watching TV. Not too worried. This happens every day. That tells you how bad the crime is. Citizens show, throwing their shoes down at the guy. Hey, you're making too much noise with your gun. Knock that off. It's the middle of the day and it's raining. Lots of handheld right here. Though this was before anybody would call such a thing shaky cam. I think it's fine enough. I mean, you get the sense that there's a frantic chase. Well, is he limping or not? Oh yeah, Morgan Freeman taking his sweet time. Use your brakes, cars. Come on. Oof. I, I'm guessing that the fall... He kind of fell from that ladder. It might have pierced himself or something. He's kind of holding his hand here. Maybe his hand's bleeding. Crowbar strike. They call that biomechanics right there when you kind of shoot cropped close to the extremities, you know, the feet, the hands. Oh, he's got the pistol up against the head. This could be our guy. But we're going to measures here to not show the audience who it is. But this isn't a whodunit. There aren't a number of suspects brought in, questioned, and then you have to pick from the group who is the who is the killer. That's not this movie. Really, they never have a suspect except this guy. I'm all right. All right, let's get back to the door. No, wait, we can't go in there. We don't have probable cause. We don't have no warrant. Now, Somerset's kind of right here. You go about this the wrong way, your case, your case explodes.
lucky for them, this guy doesn't care about being prosecuted. We need a reason to knock down this door. Okay, you're right. You're, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I messed up. You're right. Kick it open anyway. Do apartment doors kick open that easily in reality? You stupid son of a... I like this scene here. How much money you got left? And now you know what they're doing. He has bribed this uh, homeless gal to say that she saw something and called the cops, and that's why they're here. His other cops are uh, buying it. All right, everything good? Okay, yeah, you still got to sign it. You get yourself some food, right? You don't see them walk off and say, we need to bribe some some homeless junkie to say they called the cops. Higher level film writing right there. The audience has to piece that together. But, you know, I mean, there's plenty of there to make the connection. It's not, you know, a wild th theory, right? So now they get to go in. How does this explain that the door was busted down to the other cops? That the other cops go and say, hey, wait, okay, but you already busted the door. Oh, okay, well, I mean, yeah, we busted the door after we were called by the homeless gal, I guess. His... And then we're just, now we're letting her tell the story to you guys. After we uh, we busted the door, but didn't go inside and look around yet. There's Victor's hand for the fingerprints. Yeah, Detective Mills, you're rather busted up. Custom leather. Wild Bills. This could be a clue to the next uh, body. Remember, the count is three right now. A uh, bathtub photo lab, right? Now, he, John Doe uses a number of these marble uh, notebooks. It's kind of like marble-esque uh, um, sort of jacket over on the cover. The special edition DVD of this, which I think was probably like... It was. It had to be over two discs. It was probably three or so. Came in a a case that was reminiscent of the notebooks. And there seems to be some conflicting information about the title of this movie. I've lately, as of two thousand or twenty twenty two, it seems as though it's written seven s e v e n. Uh, just before that, it seemed like I had been seeing it as s e. Numeral 7, E-N. Uh, when listed places. Like, that was the official way to write it. And I honestly can't recall what it said at the in the title sequence. Or if it, if it says so at the very end. Um, how it's written. But back in the day, I don't recall anybody putting the number 7 in the middle of the name when bringing this movie up. Which I guess that 7 is 
sort of a V at a 90 degree angle. We had him, that photographer who pays the cops good to get to the scene. Yeah, that was the guy. We had him and let him go. Oh, look, it stopped raining. Hmm. I wonder, do, do the sketch artists do better than that, typically? Alright, we got his money. We just so happen to not have a single fingerprint of this guy in his own apartment. Two thousand notebooks of just uh, inane rambling. Guy's motivation is to make a statement um, in that humanity is so awful he has to make some kind of grand gesture. Though, as depicted in the world of this city, he can't be too far off. It seems like everybody's miserable and there's crime all over the place, right? No discernible order to the notebooks. Phone's ringing, but where is it? There it starts, I admire you. Unwittingly becoming the target here, Detective Mills. Guy's name is listed as John Doe. And they're just going to call him John Doe. Taped some of that. This isn't the days of, uh, oh yeah, we keep them on the line, we'll track them. In Bad Boys 95, they track a cell phone call. And in 1995, that is science fiction. Alright, we're still at a count of three. We're about to, I think, see number four here. Wild Bill's Leather, Saturday. Only in a city can you really sustain niche shops. And in part, a lot of that's got to be kind of inherited. It was uh, just the overhead. It's a lot to bite into, isn't it? They found the blonde. Okay, this is going to be victim number four. All right, this guy's shouting in the uh, the cashier. They're going to be talking to him in a bit. I 
I think the cashier guy, I think he died recently. I'm actually going to look this up because I, I have some information on him. And uh, I'm le drawing conclusions there. I think we have another Nine Inch Nails song playing here. And look, we've got the, the lights going. We're doing the industrial club scene type thing here. Michael Massey. Okay, so we're interviewing two guys here. One is the the guy who's wearing the apparatus, right? The other guy, uh, Michael Massey, I think, right here, who is the cashier. He is the guy who uh, shot and killed uh, Brandon Lee during the Crow. Uh, it was well, it was his gun that malfunctioned. Uh, He actually died in 2016. Man, this guy, I feel like I should know who he is. I, I didn't look it up, sorry. That is a really good picture of a Polaroid. Without the glossy, bouncing off any of the lights, you know, none of that. Would we be recording this conversation reel to reel today? Unlikely. But I think if you do it this way, you, you can say that it's not manipulated. It's something, though. They have two interrogation rooms. We do so much interrogating around here in the city. If we catch John Doe, he turns out to be the devil himself. That might live up to expectations. Um, he's pretty much the devil, yeah. I mean, you're looking for a guy who, um, it's, it's odd to think that we have two guys, I think, up for Best Supporting Actor in 1995 in this movie, but not for this movie. I think Kevin Spacey wins for, uh, The Usual Suspects. Okay, I say 95 films, but it's 1996 award. But uh, Brad Pitt's up for, I, I, I think he was nominated for an Oscar for uh, 12 Monkeys. Now, I realize that the path for the redemption for... You know, Kobe Bryant, you're able to wash away the sins because if you bring championships afterwards, people just kind of forget about the transgressions. For an actor, you need to shove out a hit after the cancellation, right? He can't come back and play John Doe again. But I'm telling you, and there's another guy involved who could use some redemption, Brian Singer, who directed The Usual Suspects. Get those two together. The movie's called Kaiser Soze, and I think people will, will look past the cancellation. We'll be like, oh yeah, but eh, so even they might be into little boys, so what? I think they'll end up doing that. If, if the finished product is of quality, people will look aside of issues that they, they had with uh, character.
All right, so we're up to the count of four. I'm trying to keep my, my fingers here in position. I think we'll happen across five soon. And then it kind of stops. We get to five and then it kind of stops. You'll know, see. We gotta go to a bar and talk. You know, it's almost like they kicked him out of the precinct for the day. Um, we haven't seen Gwyneth Paltrow in a bit. And I think that unbeknownst to the audience, we've gotten the last line we are going to get out of Gwyneth Paltrow. And that was when talking to uh, Somerset at the diner. Oh wait, she said I know. Okay. Now frustration is set in for Somerset here. I hadn't noticed that tattoo before. I may have to look up uh, Morgan Freeman's tattoo here on the forearm. You know, Sean Connery was rocking a tattoo on the forearm. Most people didn't don't think notice there. Throw that metronome. There we go. Yeah. Of course, uh, Morgan Freeman also has the Unusual pierced ear type thing going too. I was born 50 years old. Throwing that knife. But we don't... It's not like a situation arises where a gun's pulled on but he... You know, we have the foreshadowing of his knife throwing, right? To save the day. That doesn't happen. 911 switchboard's not looking like that today at all. Sure as hell not going to be in such a dark area. Here is victim number five. Pride. Sleeping pills glued to one hand, telephone glued to the other. You see what he did there? Slice her up, call for help, you live, but you'll be disfigured, or put yourself out of your own misery. Cut off her nose to spite her face. All right, now we're just going to park alongside the uh, police station, have a go in, and look, it's not raining, but it is a wet surface. So we got five. Fourteenth precinct. Right as they're going in, on cue, out steps a guy from a cab... Well timed, it's not like they show up and say, Hey, there's a guy down here looking for you. He he matches all the descriptions of Don Joe. He says he's John Doe and all this, you know. It's more dramatic, I guess, if um, this lines up in a serendipitous fashion. Detective. Detective Kevin Spacey really good in this role, by the way. You're looking for me. Super antsy, uh, unmellowed Detective Mills here, right? He 
guy has the uh, highest priced lawyer still in town. And he worked on the West Wing. Kind of like the Joker. No bank account history, none of this. Uh, credit statement, five years old. Nothing in his uh, pockets but knives and lint. For the first time ever, you and I total agreement. Two murders away from completing his masterpiece. Yep. Unusual plea deal here. Usually see this guy wouldn't have a beard anymore. I forgot his name. Oh, yeah, we got Gunny and Shaft sitting in here for this. He's got a plea deal in which he specifically wants you guys to... He wants to show you guys where the next body is. Specific. I don't think it's too much of an assumption to make that the cops would go through with this. I think that they're, I mean, they, they have a duty to wrap this up. If you do not accept his plead insanity across the board, you'll never find the bodies. So, okay, actually, here's the uh, scenario. Sorry. If you take him out to this place, you'll find the bodies and he'll plead guilty. If you don't agree, he'll plead insane and quite possibly get off by being, you know, so methodical here. He could be... It, it could stick. They don't want to chance that. And they want to find these bodies... So what's to lose? He's going to plead guilty after this anyway, right? It's a guy who wants to be caught. And I'm sure you guys know why. Oh, we're going to wear a wire. You know, I was watching Gone Girl, and briefly towards the end, it's a guy... I'm not telling you, you got to make sure you don't have a wire. And here we go, putting on a wire. And look at this, these guys sharing a smile, laugh. They don't, they're a little oblivious as to what's occurred and how their part's going to be played. Or rather, the cards have been played largely for them. Their wire set up there with the tape. I think that's pretty similar to what you see in uh, Con Air. These things never have as clear of audio as shown in the movies.
Well, at least they're using sure. We're just out there escorting an unarmed suspect to where he hid the, the, the last two bodies, right? I kind of feel like John C. McGinley's doing too much. Like, come on, he's tapping the side of the helicopter like anybody's going to notice that. Go, go, go. Like, like you, you, you tap the back of a truck a couple times to signal, go ahead and move. And he freaks out a little easily uh, for SWAT team leader guy at, at the bed of sloth, right? So... Look at that, we don't have rain. All right, so we got the eye in the sky following the car. We're gonna head out. Landscape out here, clearly not indicative of New York City. As we go further away from the city, you'll see. Boy, this has gotta be a fun car ride, huh? You want people listening, you can't just tap him on the shoulder anymore. How would John Doe react to our times with TikTok? Now you'll see here his jacket, or sorry, not jacket, but his shirt. You know, you, the prison get up here, it mentions this county, I think fictional county. And you can get this shirt online. I tried to figure out what county this was, and the first thing that shows up is buy a shirt to look like him. It's finished. It's going to be. People will be barely be able to comprehend. It's just uh, words allude how how grand this is. It's going to really be something. You wait and see. See, now this is not anywhere near New York City. Just look at the surroundings. Oh, he's so excited. It's so close and not too far. Major kudos for having an actual helicopter. You gotta have two helicopters to get that shot. And you can't have the shadow of the second helicopter on the ground. It's more comfortable for you to label me insane. What's the contradiction, you say?
You're chosen by higher power. And your hand was forced. Seems strange to me you'd be enjoying this so much, huh? You enjoyed torturing those people. Oh, but he's acting like he uh, he enjoyed it because he had to enjoy it. He was forced to. Turn the sin against the sinner. Oh, but you killed innocent people. Now, of course, uh, Mills is going to say they're innocent. Oh, really? This dusty man could barely stand up. What about this cat woman? You know, these are not, you know, victimless crimes. They deserved it. You know, I'm cleaning up. Pederast. I I thought it was pederast. I isn't that what they said in Big Lebowski? I'm gonna have to look this up. I'm I'm watching this with the subtitles on. You know, try to pick up on these things as I'm chewing popcorn and bloviating. You know, he makes a bit of a point here that he came to them, that they really couldn't have caught him unless he wanted to be caught. I don't know, but eventually we would have got you. Really? You sure about that? should be thanking me because they're you're going to be remembered because of me right mills thinks he's going to be remembered for catching him not for what's about to happen which is actually what john doe's talking about like i said a little bit of kevin spacey here goes a long way he's he only presents his face of uh, with about 30 minutes left. I don't think you quite broke his face. Yeah, it looked like you kind of got him in the shoulder with that crowbar. Of course, he, I think he knows from the temperament. The guy was so outraged that he was taking pictures of the crime scene. That's how he knew who to, to uh, place in this position so that he can, so that John Doe himself can be number seven. He needed a guy with a temper, a hothead who would react in the moment. All right, you see those towers? That's where we're going. Can you get a package delivered to a specific spot rather than an address? Yeah, just drop the package off at the corner of these roads. Like, does that work? 
I mean, even if it's not an intersection, how do you even bring that up? No doubt about it, John C. McGinley is actually in that helicopter. Not much out here, you think, huh? Well, you guys don't want to enjoy a day without rain over there? Well, if it's not going to be rainy, it's going to be dusty. You get one or the other. There, there is your humorous levity in the movie right there. Dead dog. I didn't do that. That's, that's not one of the crimes. That's not one of the seven. Come on. Now, the whole point here of why we walk, also interesting. It's not to take him to where the body is. <clears throat> Popcorn catching up with me there. It's so that he can separate him from Somerset. Without Somerset there to talk some sense into him, he can, he can get to this guy. Reveal to him how um, he has put things in place. Hey man, I'm just a delivery guy in a van. Is it marked FedEx or anything? No, because uh, I don't think they wanted to be a part of the imagery here. I'm not sure who the van driver is, but the, I, I should probably look it up. But good opportunity for a director cameo, if you think about it. It's for Detective Mills. Maybe you should uh, take it to him. He arranged to have this sent to Detective Mills before he turned himself in. Okay, paid me 500 bucks to be right here exactly 7 o'clock. 500 bucks back then goes a long way. Well, yes and no. Con video game consoles were more expensive in some way if you want a 3DO. Um, computers were more expensive. T 
TVs might have been more expensive. I really can't speak on that. You know what? I guess this is your payoff for the knife. It's the closest thing you're going to get to knife payoff. There we go. So is the law say that a cop can have a switchblade? Is the, there are exceptions to this? Fragile handle of care will assume it's not a bomb. What's in the box? Yeah, you know, that that's probably the most quoted line from the movie. Coming up. And I'm out of popcorn. Oh, he is shocked. He sees what it is. And here's the thing. I think in the movie you get a like a one frame look at what's inside the box uh, during their talking it out coming up here just it's inserted and a similar thing happens at the end of Fight Club but not with the head in fact when Fight Club was in the news uh, for the ending being censored in China, I assumed that's why. Not because it was about taking out the, the credit card companies and the, the banking and all that. I didn't think that, the, or, or rather, taking down buildings and the like, fighting the system. I didn't think that was the issue. I tried to taste the simple life. Oh, look at the vibrant colors here. Man, 1995 had some good looking movies. I took her pretty head. Yeah, I went to your house and played dad, he says. What? What's he talking about? Give me the gun. I'm going to put my gun down here. You, you, trust me. Just What's in the box? Because I envy. It seems that envy is my sin. Okay, so, actually, I think, hmm. All right, so it's not that Tracy is one of them, but rather he's Envy, and you have to become Wrath. So it's not that you, it's not that Mills is going to die, be one of the victims. In a way, he, he is much a victim, But he completes the puzzle. He completes the... Not the puzzle, but the masterpiece here. He, com he sorts this all out. But hey, he's got some information that uh, Mills doesn't have. Oh, but Somerset knew she was pregnant. Oh, he didn't know. I think that he didn't know type thing. I think that gets kind of quoted. Oh, you didn't know. You know I hear it paraphrased in places. No, oh, what am I going to do? Now, in, in his shoes, you can do this. You ain't, you ain't going away. Like, there ain't no jury in the world going to convict him or nothing. This ain't going to court. The DA's not, not filing charges. It's not self-defense, but it's may as well be. But if he does this, he wins. Remember, John Doe's got the upper hand. There we go, that one, that frame of Tracy's head. And what, he shot him? What the hell's going on down there? We can't land because of the power lines. Well, I mean, you could, but... you do this he wins screw it right 
I think most of us would have done the same. Somebody call somebody. That is not the way police are going to be t communicating. There would be more purpose behind that instead of just cluelessness. Just get him what he needs. He's not being arrested, really. They're kind of just, hey, man, you're not, your head's not in a good spot. We'll just, you know, drive you home or whatever. Go, go talk to a psychiatrist type of thing. I'm thinking, where well, are you going to be around? I'll be around. I guess I, that may indicate that Somerset's not retiring. Here we go. To quote Orm, same way the world's a uh, place worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. And then you have unique end credits, too. Reverse order. You got this kind of uh, impact, uh, sort of impact reverse type font, almost, or label. And all the... I think that the um, imperfections uh, shown here and in the way p things are pieced together, it's uh, you end up with similar kind of effects if you work on developing photos. You kind of, uh, yeah, it's like he he's pieced together. Uh, I don't know some amateur photography self-developed photo type stuff. I, I, not a lot of movies had creative end credits back then. Nowadays, we don't even have creative title sequences. We shove those at the end of the films. Thank you a lot, Marvel. All right, Seven from 1995. One of my favorites. What do you guys think of this? Let me know in the comments below. Till next time, adios.